Hi, uh, my name is Sharpa, and welcome to the After Party Conversations with Spy Party Players. It has been uh, quite a while since we did one of these, uh, but Poon Noob over on uh, Discord sent, sent me a message, and we thought, "Hey, let's let's do let's do a podcast. Why not?" Uh, Poon Noob, how are you doing today or tonight this evening? good everything around me is burning uh literally because i'm over here on the west coast and oregon and california are both just up in flames but i'm safe got to play some spy party with sharper which is always nice and looking forward to this weekend hey yes because you were saying you've got some um tournament events coming up yeah it's just been really busy so typically with pack season uh and just the knowing that half the spy party community is just going to be in Seattle and not be at their computers. We try to stop tournaments around this time, but that's not the case this season. So we got SCL, which I'm finishing up my last match of got summer cup, which is like in the round of 16. And then they're also doing a PAX invitational, uh, which I, for some reason signed up for, despite the fact I already am playing quite enough spy party, <laughs> at least in some sense. Um, I'm also casting for that tomorrow too, which will be fun. Ooh. Um, so can you explain for the um, uh, un unenlightened of us in this conversation what the PAX Invitational is? Yeah, so shout outs to Screwloose and Sped Monkey, who are uh, the tournament organizers. They just invited at 16 people. I assume they had a few more invites of people who couldn't take and then invited more people, but 16 people tournament, single elimination, and it's all really good players. I was looking at the uh, the bracket and I got put seventh seed and I was very frustrated because seventh seed doesn't seem particularly good. And then I looked at the uh, the sixth seed and it was Yeesh and I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> if Yeesh is sixth seed, I don't mind being seventh seed. I'll stop complaining because right. uh, it's just an absolutely loaded tournament. And it's really nice to get. Uh, it's the same thing with uh, you see with the postseason and SCL and the Summer Cup. It's really nice to get people that you don't usually see playing against each other but are highly skilled playing uh, just for the spectation. And it's good for predictions too. Because mm -hmm. um, we had uh, just played a match and I suppose this is one of the things you were, you were sort of um, talking about was making predictions of how you know certain players work against certain other players. And so, yeah, that, that sounds like quite a fun, fun, exciting thing, the novelty of matchups you don't normally see. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, we're not going to talk too much spy party. It's the whole premise of the podcast. But I was mentioning, I do want to compliment you while I have you. You're the hardest player to read. Um, just back when we played in SCL, I would go through your replays. And I'm just like, okay, usually, because I do casting, I usually know what the person's going to do next because usually they're predictable. And you're just like, and I purloin. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but like, uh, not like necessarily in a bad way. It's just taking the choices, the, the road less traveled, if you will. Yeah, yeah, I, I would I would like to describe that as um, if if I have a style, what it is is um, uh, I kind of just think of it as I'm constantly trying to learn how to do things, and so I think, okay, this this game, I'll see if I can do this thing, or I'll see if I can see if I can do do something else. Um, and often it's not very well thought out, and perhaps perhaps that is that is why um, I mean that's a, that's a whole Yomi thing of if you know what the sort of right or um, most efficient way to play is and you see somebody not doing that then you go okay you you made this point say okay that thing you did was either a bad spy play or it was a really random ai move and either way you were like upset that that somebody would do that yeah i so i mean i live with mr rogers who's also in the scl and he's the only person who knows this i just yell at my ai and like <laughs> i cuss them out i'm just like what are you doing you stupid, stupid Irish. Don't go to middle statues. Now I have to shoot you. And then it's the person. I'm like, oh, it's not the AI. I'm just being mean to the spy now. And I feel bad. But the robots, I'm fine being being mean at. Um, <laughs> they, they don't mind. They're, they're very accommodating. Yeah, and it, a large part of like my gameplay is obviously uh, with like more behavioral and etiquette stuff. It's like trying to really figure out what the opponent considers doing. And it's been really nice recently because Spy Party's gotten a bit bigger uh, with like big streamers. There's been like variety streamers who've been playing Spy Party for the last six years, uh, but we've seen like even more of an influx than we're used to without the game 
being out. And so it's really nice to see these guys who are like actually in voice comms with each other going, I think you're wheels. And they picked wheels the last five times. So yeah, it's wheels. Uh, just the, uh, the mind games go from every, every level of difficulty. And it's been, uh, it's been a fun spectation sport at this point. Yeah. Cool. That, that's, um, <laughs> I feel embarrassed because I've been so, so ad- out of the loop for a while. So you're saying, um, uh, it's only been just recently that there's been like a, a new influx coming from, from streamers. Yeah, so I think this year has been kind of uh, quiet for video games because hmm. uh, the big video games are Fall Guys, which is like a battle royale for kids. Among Us, which is a game that's been for free on your phone for the last two years that streamers have really picked up. And not much else. Like Valorant was big, but uh, I don't think it appealed to too many people. Um universally like someone like fall guys does Hmm. and they're still looking for these like games that they can play with other streamers and are captivating to their audiences who are huge like we're talking six thousand ten thousand fifty thousand people uh and so it needs to be appealing quite quickly and while the audience doesn't necessarily understand spy spy party especially at a high level but often they just hear banana bread and that's all they really know uh, they do understand the idea that uh, playing wheels and getting shot as the guy in the wheelchair is in some way inherently funny and in some way uh, inherently interesting. <laughs> Definitely. And I, I suppose that's w- one of those things is um, if these streamers have like um, uh, a large, large established audience um, and the sort of entertainment value and just hearing them banter with each other, then um, yeah, Spy Party would be... Uh, an appropriate sort of thing for them to to pick up on. So that's cool. Yeah, I I think it's also like a large part uh just because of COVID. So I don't have you done an after party since uh no. the COVID so, pandemic? Okay, th- this is how long it has been. The last after party episode was from PAX 2018. Oof. Mm. Uh PAX 2018 was the one that you you came over, right? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. So I mean, let's let's just talk about PAX for a bit then, because PAX 2019 was good fun. I think it was potentially like the most amount of people uh, that we ever had for the Spy Party community, because I barely was at the booth anymore, just because we had so many people. Because people just come to PAX for the community at this point. Hmm. Like, Spy Party's nice. It's nice to help out the Spy Party community, but we don't need 30 people to do that. Uh, it's for the, the things that are still actually we're still attempting to do. Uh, there's a lot of uh, the Invitational, as we mentioned, but we're also trying to organize a few other things, just uh, classic community things uh, in the name of PAX. And I think it actually started today, formally. The um, in- Invitational? No, PAX. Just, uh, oh, they're oh, doing yeah. an online PAX. Really? Huh. Yeah. Uh, so this probably won't go out unless you put push it out immediately necessarily in time mm. but i think pax is a week-long uh event now where they're it's free and they're just doing like online panels and stuff oh cool um and i'm sure some games will like go release themselves on beta or some other action uh for the spy party community we're doing the invitational despite the fact that there's already plenty of competitive spy party for looking for it to watch uh and my favorite thing, which is why we were in contact in the first place, is the Steph versus Wodar uh, yes, please, money match. Please please do tell me, because um, I think you gave me a sort of rough description of what that is, but I'm very curious to know what uh, what what the plan is for this uh, matchup between uh, Steph and Wodar this year. Yeah, so, so if anybody's not inc- uh, incredibly familiar with our community, uh, Steph is like community mom. She's been at every PAX. She sits in lobby. Uh, we call it the couch because she's just th- the furniture that, of uh, the spy party lobby. Uh, and Wodar is our resident meme. Uh, he's funny guy. He's got a big beard. He just looks like someone that uh, is fun to be around. And they've had a money match. Uh, every PAX they've both been to, which I think is like five or six at this point, they bet a dollar more each time, so this will be like a six dollar money match. <laughs> uh, and it's always been Street Fighter Five, and then two other games. 
So I know last year it was Croconol, a board game that's become very popular in the Spy Party house, and Poyo Poyo Tetris, which they're both familiar with, but not like brilliant at. And they've gotten better at Street Fighter V over the years, but uh, they're not like top level or anything. Hmm. Uh, this year, uh, I reached out to Spy Party community members, particularly ones in interesting places, yourself included, uh, to make a GeoGuessr map. Because uh, I have the ability to like just make a map, but you have to pay a bit of money, but it's like pennies. And you have a pin somewhere in the world, then it just puts you on Google Maps, and the question is, where are you? And I've made it so you can like go down the road. So, uh, for example, if you're in Seattle, for example, and say you just started on PAX, you'd be like, okay, so I'm on 5th and Pike. And then you go down the road, and you see an American flag, and you're like, okay, this is America. And you go down the road, and you see the Space Needle, and you're like, that looks very familiar. Hmm. Uh, and then you figure out, okay, then you circle back and go, oh, okay, I was on 5th and Pike. But Spy Party people live everywhere. Uh so it's and not necessarily in the middle of the city is large landmarks. Uh, you're over somewhere in Western Australia, and that's good fun because I don't think many people have been to uh, well, I, been see, to where you're at. Yeah, see, I'm I'm worried now. Maybe this would be an advantage for Steph because I think uh, she used to have a friend who was who was over around here, so she might might know a couple landmarks. I'm not sure. We'll find out. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple of things. So, like, if anybody's ever in Hong Kong, I'm like, I'm pretty sure Wodar lived in Hong Kong and Steph uh, is Chinese-Canadian, uh, which is a... I'm used to saying African-American, but chinese Canadians also a thing. Uh, so they both probably have, like, a bit of ability there. We got, like, Canadian Bacon and Falcon Hit and Dells and all these, like, Canadians that are nowhere near Steph. Like, she's British Columbia, hmm. uh, but, like, might have advantage there. If anybody ends up in California, I think Wardar's uh, got the advantage. But the reality is, like, there's a lot of Europeans and there's a lot of, like, weird, interesting places. I've thoroughly enjoyed it uh, because people will go, hey, this is where I live. And then I jump in and then I look for the most interesting thing that just happened to be going on as the Google Maps car went by. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll link in... Uh, in the spy party discord and uh so people can play it so i won't spoil too much but there's like there's one that i love that there's a guy who's just like biked out to a, the middle of nowhere and is fishing and i'm like that's great <laughs> you can be the start of this and then they can figure out where they are from here because it's uh it's not particularly like there's not like the no space needle in that case it's just a guy fishing and it's great yeah um or like some graffiti or something. Just something that maybe even the person who lives in the town hasn't noticed or couldn't notice because uh, it's only there temporarily. Hmm. I, yeah, but that's, um, it also feels like a nice sort of game to um, set up at the moment where unfortunately a lot of people are still stuck indoors uh, for the most part. Have you seen any of uh, Flight Simulator uh, 2020? So I, I, I'd heard the, the news sort of going around, people saying that uh, they were using flight simulator because it apparently models the world very very accurately as a way to sort of uh, get out and see, see parts <laughs> of the world that they would otherwise have been planning to travel to um i don't know had, had, had you had any travel plans that have been been cancelled i mean presumably i did of... yeah my cousin was planning on getting married actually i think this week sort of oh. thing um i think they're postponing i've it's been true. Like people have either been getting married anyways, or like courthouse style, or just postponing. I feel like next year there's just gonna be a ton of weddings, yeah. being a a twenty something with friends who are in long term relationships. Uh, as soon as COVID ends, I say next year. I, I don't know. I'm not your doctor, <laughs> but uh, who who knows? It's still an open question. I think for for everyone. Yeah. No. It, it's been it's been rough and like. Yeah, as, as we mentioned the fires there earlier, it's like I'm already expert at staying inside. So staying inside now because the air around me is hazardous. I'm like, haha, I've already figured out how DoorDash works. Can't trick me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, obviously this isn't news. I feel like any podcast in the last six months has been affected by 
uh, and talked about uh, coronavirus. Yeah, and it it feels like one of those things where um, I I know um, depending on people's circumstances, you're almost not sure what to say or or what's worth saying because everybody, yeah, as you say, is in in the same boat or um, knows what's going on, and so do your best, take care of yourself, make sure everyone else um, uh, you know is doing okay, and it's about as much as you can do. Yeah, play more video games, keep your mental health up, and keep other people. Yeah, I rem- <laughs> do. Good. Um, a, f- a friend of mine was saying um, uh, his, his at his family place, um, both the mum and the dad um, are kind of high, high risk for certain um, conditions they have, and so the family's been sort of staying at home for the most part. But one of the younger sons um, prefers like staying inside and playing video games. And normally the parents would be sort of haranguing him trying to get him to go out but now they can't and so it's like haha you can't stop me um that's something that's happened recently with video games too where things like pokemon snap and like very recently the tony hawk pro skater and these things that as a 18 to 35 year old male i get pandered to a lot this isn't new (laughs) but i'm just like all these games that are coming out that are just purely nostalgic and i'm like this is a fine time to be uh be at home um it's it's interesting though. I mean, like losing packs, I think is going to be a big deal for a lot of people because I think, like, for some of us, this was really the only trip that we have on a regular basis. Like having a yearly thing to do for four days and just be able to plan around that, take a day off. We have Labor Day in the U.S. Hmm. and PAX is usually that weekend, so it's usually only one day off work. And being able to migrate up to Seattle or in some people's cases, down to Seattle, and in some people's cases, across the world. Uh, we had you in 2018. We had Plastics in 2019, who's from the UK. Um, if and when PAX does come back to being a live event, uh, it's always interesting to see who's the furthest traveled uh, spy party person. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a good point you bring up, is that um, it sort of becomes a, a fixture in the calendar, and so, you know, you sort of... Have a have a sense for for time passing and the year progressing by like oh you know PAX is coming up or PAX is like this this far away and so yeah it felt felt weird thinking wow it, like that it that it had been a year because it really did creep up for the fact that obviously it was um, put online so yeah it is that that weird weird feeling of elastic time like having um all all sort of fixtures in your calendars or events being cancelled or moved gives you a weird sense that time is simultaneously moving much faster but also going at a crawl. Yeah, I have a personal thing where it's Pancake Day, which I believe is uh, usually known as like Ash Wednesday, I want to say, um, that always sneaks up on me every year. And I think it's in part because that sort of time, like pre-Easter, is like the least holiday-heavy time, hmm. at least in the U.S. Definitely not like Halloween, uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, like we're we're moving into uh, the holiday season. Um and it's also just one of those things I don't think about. Uh, so I'm, and then I end up at my parents' place, and they're like, "You want pancakes?" I'm like, "What is it? Pancake day?" I'm like, "Oh yes, it is pancake day." Um, however, that sort of like phenomenon where things are just sneaking up on me, and I have no clue how time works, is happening all the time. Like that's just that's just a coronavirus thing. I have no clue what I was doing two months ago, and it's probably the same thing I'm doing now, honestly. But time is an illusion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, it, um, it's interesting you mentioned that thing about the Easter period because for us over in Australia, it's almost um, almost kind of kind of the reverse. So after um, Christmas, between between then and Easter, um, we have a popular um, bakery sweet called a hot cross bun that comes out mm. in, in the sort of lead up to Easter, um, and so, so so that often sort of marks like approach of Easter because all the shops will be putting those out. So I guess it's a similar sort of thing to, to Pancake Day is, um, uh, yeah, you like have, have this thing starting to come out and that reminds you or like builds anticipation for, for Easter. Oh, yeah. The, the pumpkin spice lattes <laughs> will uh, will forewarn us that the uh, the holiday season is beginning. Yeah. Yeah. The, the joke I keep hearing about that is it keeps coming earlier and earlier. And it's, it's a similar thing with, with hot cross buns is, you know, we, we, we yeah. lament. It's like, ah, oh, it's only just after Christmas. How can you already have hot cross buns out or whatever? <laughs> totally inappropriate. Yeah. No, you guys have, because uh, the seasons have flipped, right? So Yeah. yeah. So we're just uh, coming into spring. 
That's that's lovely. Hmm. You guys can have fires in the uh, in the future too. It'd be great. Well, uh, Did... I'm, I mean, that's the crazy thing everyone forgets about is you know seeing the horrible wildfires that are happening in California. Those yeah. tre- tremendously horrible bushfires in Australia would um, this year. That that was. Um... Oh yeah, for sure. And they they got completely overshadowed by uh, coronavirus, which happened like a week later. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm um uh, almost um. I mean, there's many reasons to be miffed with um, uh, the terrible pandemic sweeping the world, but but one of the unfortunate things about that is um, uh, not to get too much in, into politics, but the um, uh, leading leading party party in Australia was getting um, I think appropriate negative publicity or pushback on their mishandling of the situation that allowed um, those bushfires to to happen to such a large extent. And then that all has sort of been forgotten given the current situation. Um, hopefully people will sort of um, remember or that'll come come back to mind, you know, in, in the summer. Yeah, I mean, the, I, I think it's probably the, the reverse political parties, but the same thing's happening in New Zealand, right? Where uh, the lovely gal down there, I cannot remember the name. Oh, um, I should remember. Oh, uh, oh uh, Jacinda. Yes. That's Jacinda it. Ardern. Um, yeah, she's had a different thing where the uh, the opposition party is just very grumpy because they're just like we have nothing we can hold against them because the only uh, the only thing to talk about is the coronavirus and New Zealand absolutely knocked out of the park uh, regarding their response. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, just just one of those things. Um, so what I'm curious to know, like what what um, have you been filling filling your time with um, uh, just video games? Like outside of work, how do you sort of deal with the cabin fever yeah so in regards to like keeping uh like friends in circles uh it's been yeah like some some video games uh most recently i've been watching legend of korra with a friend group and we just have like a watch party that we've been doing uh like every twice twice a week bi-weekly i'm gonna say nice. i don't think bi-weekly is every two weeks i'm gonna say bi-weekly is the answer uh there mr Trebek. um <laughs> and just like having that sort of social interaction is good uh and then i live like the only way i ever get exercise is i and any decent food is i have i just walk down to our little uh bougie food area and that just keeps me uh keeps me moving we haven't had like an initiative like they've had in the uk to uh take turns exercising and getting out of the house right, right. um despite it but i think that's a good mentality to have is just getting some fresh air not that there's any out there right now <laughs> yes w- when fresh air is available go get some oh, goodness um no one thing i wanted to mention because we we're talking about the fires and we we're talking about australian stuff did you guys actually have fires over on West Side Australia, or we um we were for the most part very fortunate. We um, gen- generally all all around you get isolated bushfires during the summer, but we didn't have any that broke out of control at the very least, not to the scale that was happening happening over east. So, yeah. so like knock on wood, we have have been fortunate with that. That's one one of the sort of overall concerning things with with the situation is um what what you normally have in the in the wet season during the winter. Um, you'll do controlled burns, so you'll have um, fire services who will go and they'll uh, burn small amounts of bushland when it's wet enough that it won't get out of control, and that helps sort of limit how m- how much dry material there is to burn in the summertime. But because of um, global warming and limited staffing, there's a sort of narrower time within which it's safe to do so, um, and so that was sort of the situation, as, as I understand it, there was an excess of dry material, um, not enough time time and staff to actually do effective controlled burning. Yeah, it didn't wreck the forests, yeah, as they yeah. say. Um, that, as I understand, was one of the big contributing factors to why it was um, so so bad uh, for for this past past summer season. We just had 50, 50 mile an hour winds. No, the mm-hmm. the reason I asked in part is, and this happens with California too, because California is huge. Hmm. Um, like California is the same size as like. A lot of European countries, and people go and hear there's fires in California, and then they assume that anybody in California is now in danger. In the same way that like y- you hear about Australia, and I'm like, right. Australia is a continent. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> if I, I, if I Australia is on fire, that does not mean yeah, that yeah. Uh, the few people that I know and care for in Australia are in danger because it's just an absolutely huge place. Um, yeah. and, and in the same way that 
I say, hey, I'm British, and people go, oh, do you know this person? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. what? Like, no, I haven't met the Queen. Uh, well, um, well to, to that point, so it's a large continent, but a, lo a lot of it is quite dry. And so uh, WA, Western yeah. Australia, is a very big state. It's like a, a third of the country. Um, but a lot of that is just desert. Um, so the actual sort of most populous area is down the southwest corner. Um, yeah. So that's where the state, state capital Perth is. And so, yeah, there, um, there, there, there isn't uh, um, much of like Western Australia that isn't desert, but there's not, I, I think, like ad, as, as much to burn as over in the east where there are more forests and, and uh, bush and grassland. Yeah, for sure. Now, I'm well aware because to circle back to GeoGuessr, hmm. uh, the worst place to be put in the world is the Australian outback. Yep. Um, because it is just all straight and red and incredibly long. Uh, thankfully, you usually know what road you're on because there's only one road. Uh, but <laughs> that and like Russia, um, the problem with Russia being it's also very barren, but also the signs are in Russian and I don't know Cyrillic <laughs> languages. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lost in Siberia, that would oof, that would not be good. Uh, thankfully, I think the spy party community generally live in urban areas. Um, mm. Yeah, no, it's, I, I just find... I find the whole thing uh, funny. Like, the, the same things happened with the Portland protests where people hear about this on world news or national news and they message uh, me or more more accurately like my family because old people know other old people yeah. uh, worried. And I'm like, one, Portland's a big city. And two, the protests are like two or three blocks like, no, we're fine. We're not being mugged or whatever you think is happening. Uh, generally, people forget that the classic Disney uh, adage, it's a small world after all. After all. Uh, and just like, no, these, these, these big things, thankfully, don't affect uh, the whole population. Right. Um, other than, I mean, everybody in Oregon right now is having to deal with hazardous air, but, um, and I had, I am high risk in theory, but uh, thankfully, like most places aren't in danger of being on fire. That's a bit of a blessing, but it's always, I, I find international conversations, and we have so many of them with this bi party community, yeah. uh, quite, quite funny. There was, this is why I should write down a list of questions, but never remembered to, because I, I was thinking, oh, I feel like there was something else I was going to ask you, but I can't remember specifically what it was. Um, is there anything you wanted to bring up or to chat about while we have this opportunity? I've already, I've already, I've already cheated towards them. Uh, things like packs, and particularly like packs online. Yeah. Particularly, I think uh, we should probably shout out. There should be a lot of streams this weekend. I think next weekend too. Mm. Um, I don't know how Steph and Wardor are doing their money match. That's going to be incredibly entertaining. I think uh, I think that may, might be one of those ones that me and Track will need to suit up on the uh, the classic get the tie on to make it serious. <laughs> it's serious. Uh, now. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Generally, I, yeah. Is there? Uh, are you going to be starting these back up on a more regular basis? Gotta... Uh, I don't think so. So I'm um I've had a I've had a weird eventful couple of years. So I've done done a whole whole bunch of random different things and um i've been <laughs> i've been learning languages um and that's been keeping me like really busy so um i kind of started actually um not long after getting back from um pax 2018 i'm conversing in german now um and i've been learning fastly this year so a lot of the time that i've spent sort of um inside this year i've been uh, learning that and next year i'm planning to go to university. i'm sorry to tell you german's one of the least useful languages in the world well, because I've been to Germany and they all speak better English than me. Yeah, that that is a problem. Well, yeah, l let me tell you, mate. Learning Farsi is an even less useful language. There you I'm go. Not planning to go to Iran anytime soon. Uh, yeah, and n next year I'm planning to start learning uh, Japanese at, at university. So um, yeah, I've sort of started a weird obsession with learning languages for some reason. So that that's keep me fairly busy. And then I don't know it'll it'll pay off in the long run. At best, a nice Iranian girl moves to uh, Western Australia yeah. for no good reason, and you can chat her up. And at worst, you still know Farsi, and that's super interesting. And uh, you can't really you can't really lose. At, at worst, you you learnt more. Like more knowledge is not bad. 
Yeah, yeah. No, and, it, and it's a very nice language. I mean, I um, started learning it because um, I've got a lot of friends over here who, who speak it. And so, I th <laughs> and so for a while I was thinking, oh, I want to learn to speak Farsi. Um, but then it wasn't until um, I started learning German. And shout out to um, Spy Party player um, Belial. He was a really, really good uh, German teacher. So I would not have been able to learn that if it wasn't for him, who I met through the Spy Party community. So... <laughs> so I, I I could in a way blame blame Spy Party for for leading me to, to now being obsessed with learning learning new languages. Um, so yeah, thank thanks to uh to that guy to Belial. Yeah, I mean we we got a shout out the Spy Party community. So with Spy Party as a video, I mean I'm mean, playing more Spy Party this weekend than I ever will. But uh, it's not really the thing I love about the community because for things like chess, like if I want to get a good chess game against someone I know. I got the community. If I want to get uh, a game of Fall Guys launched up or Among Us uh, launched, I have five, ten people who are willing and down to do so. Yeah. Just having a group of people who are like-minded and readily available uh, is fantastic, and especially so during the pandemic. Uh, yeah, definitely. And it's a it's a blessing, like because uh, with real friends, it's it's hard. Like, I want to be doing stuff like uh, like a D and D session and stuff, and just can't do it. So, uh, and getting online with the the same sort of people, I'm like, nope. I have a hundred people who I could ping, and uh, and get a game going, compared to the smaller friend circle that you can only have so many friends in your in your real life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's quite real life. I, didn't, I mean, it's real life, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, non virtual life. Let's say I, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the sort of people who, in in theory, you could drive over to their place and touch them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, don't do that. That's a bad <laughs> idea. Yeah, not 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 now. Now now they are included in the virtual friend group um, for safety reasons. Yeah, I was never gonna um, have a great topic on staying, but have you heard of the Sweet Caroline ban? Um, no, I have have not. So I've heard like a couple of things, where, like certain songs are just uh, like being taken off. Like you don't want to hear be in a uh, in a store and hear Doctor Doctor give me the news. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, but the Sweet Caroline ban uh, is specifically because it hits all the wrong problems because uh, people love shouting it, uh, and the things are like touching me, touching you, and it's like no, don't don't touch me or or touch you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then also just I I love the idea of uh, people just getting. Uh, getting too excited and they have to like whisper sweet caroline which is impossible that feels like a nice place to close things out sort of appreciating how nice it is to have a large community of people you can keep in touch with during these during this tough time so hats off to everyone in the the spy party community for uh, being there for each other yeah thanks to you the listener <laughs> um Cool. Well, thanks very much, Pundum. I'm I'm trying to remember. Is is this the first time that um that we've actually talked together on on the podcast? No. So I think uh, literally the last time you did your podcast, uh, you open mic'd us. Hmm. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When uh, you were just we we're waiting for Johann Sebastian Joust to launch the best game ever. That's that's what I truly miss about PAX is uh, being able to knock controllers out of other people's hands. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, we. We might have actually talked about Spy Party at that point, but uh, I think this is the first time that we've done a conversation like this, and it was oh. truly pleasant. I appreciate your time. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I think that was an argument we were having about um, etiquette. Oh, etiquette. Ugh. Yes. Etiquette. <laughs> oh, there. Yeah. Now we have blinks. Don't, day. don't, don't blink. It's like Doctor Who levels of, uh, of etiquette sniping. It's, it's, a, it's atrocious. Yeah. And I love it. <laughs> uh, celebrate the sweet things in life. Like yeah, I mean, even like this is going to be the worst year. I mean, it, especially yeah, globally, like, like some countries have civil wars and stuff. And you're like, okay, maybe that year's worse for you in particular, but uh, and poor Lebanon, for example, mm. uh, this year with the big explosion. But uh, 2020 is going to be the worst year for a lot of people, and just having an appreciation for community, having ability to. For the people who can, still can, having their humor and trying to just bring everybody up, I think is noble. I think it's important, and uh, I think this was fun. I think this is a good part for me. Yeah. Uh, good use of my Friday night, because I'm not going out drinking. 
Well, that's for sure. All right. Well, thanks very much for your time, uh, Poon Noob. I had fun here. Yeah. Talk to you soon. All right. Take care.